We're in Psalm 8 to, um, so that I can explain again that I've made another mistake and I need to clarify it. <clears throat> now, here's one reason why I like clarifying and admitting to mistakes. <clears throat> The main reason is, is like in the case of, I called it Elohim and it was Adonai, is that, the, that I, number one, I, I, in my heart, I accept it, I own it, I, I'm okay, I'm not perfect, I do make mistakes. And so, uh, but that one with Adonai being the name instead of Elohim has just exploded and you know because we're in the middle of it. But another mistake that I made was um, that I said that um, the name Adonai is always applies to God, and the name Adon, A-D-O-N, which is just a, a, a another version, applies to people, and usually leaders on some level or something, not, not leaders in the way we would think, but those who should be protectors like a husband might be called that and would be at times. Uh, and Alana just did that with her husband. So <laughs> she got it. Anyway, um, in Psalm 8, verse 1, it says, O Lord, which is Jehovah, our Lord. Uh, and that second, our Lord, is Adon, which I said, never applies to God, it always applies to man. Well, I'm wrong, and I'm wrong regularly. Uh, that's why you search the scripture so much, because you never know how far off I'm going to be. So stay at it, keep loving the Lord and digging in. <clears throat> um, uh, so let me, um, let me just read a little bit. Before I do that, let me just say we're going to go to Psalm 16, which is the actual next use of the word Adonai in the Psalms. Psalm 2 is the first one. So if you want to go ahead and now turn to Psalm 16, and then I'm just going to read a few things um, that, that you know we've, we've talked about, but I just want to maybe expand slightly. <clears throat> Adonai is primarily a designation given by those who are going through sufferings and will ultimately lay down their lives in a lamb's spirit. That is a time when it appears that the enemy has won. So I put that is a time in parenthesis, uh, the quarter. That is the time in the quarter when it appears that the enemy has won, such as Jesus' sufferings before and at the cross. When they have followed through in that spirit, then our Adonai will deal with the evildoers and will raise slash exalt that which is after his kind, after Jesus, after the Lamb's kind. Okay. And then just another statement here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and this one I've said before, but I think it'd be good to kind of try to capture this and then, of course, take it back to the Holy Spirit and let him re reveal it. Adonai is the one to whom we give honor as if in nature we were a part of Elohim and from whom we trust for care while and after the fiery trials brought about by the evildoers. Okay, so <clears throat> let's, let's just say it like this. Okay, from the very beginning, we know Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That's the first words that he said in relationship to us before we even existed. And so <clears throat> if that likeness that he wanted truly displayed to the world was a lamb uh, instead of a great victorious, you know, 
uh, something that would be seen throughout all eternity is, you know, I'm the I'm a winner and I'm strong and I'm, uh, 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 I, you know, you your safety is in me because I'll use all power to do, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, that God failed then if that was the case because Jesus is a slaughtered lamb on the throne and that's going to be from now on, okay? And that's that's the symbol, the the. The symbol of Christianity, if, that we probably made it that, and those little things we wear around our neck or whatever, is the cross. It, it's not the resurrection. You know, if it was that, it probably we would wear a little tomb with a little a stone rolled away and go, ah, yeah, can't keep a, can't keep a good man down. But the cross and the the but but greater than the physical cross the lamb on that cross because the cross the two pieces of wood mean nothing unless the lamb spirit is manifest on it because there's two guys on, on either side of him that had two pieces of wood and they basically meant nothing it was that spirit father forgive them for they know not what they do well what are they doing they're crucifying god's son okay and he's handling it in that spirit <clears throat> All right, so my point of this was Adonai is the one to whom we give honor as if in nature we are part of Elohim. Now, we're not, we're not God and we're not going to be God ever, but we are one with him who is God. That's Jesus. We're one with Jesus. <clears throat> and the great oneness, the great oneness that he desires to flourish among us is this spirit, this spirit. Um, uh, there's an old saying that Christians are the only people that, that uh, kill their wounded. Um, this heart and this spirit so that we by Christ in us could manifest that, but be in total agreement with it and have proven it in the darkest trial of our life, the sufferings of Christ, where we will be accused of everything that we, could, we would never be, like Jesus was. This outrageous things to him and the Father and the Holy Spirit, but to us, you know, anything's believable as long as somebody says it. <clears throat> All right, so... Uh, as if in nature we were part of, in other words, we were made in his image. We were part of Elohim and ready to move in that spirit with them. Not just being the weaker one, but if at whatever time he needed us for someone else to be an Adonai, then that would be Christ in us. But it would still be through us uh, in, who... <clears throat> excuse me, who are in agreement, <clears throat> but it is more than agreement. It is who have embraced oneness as the most real thing of your life. Right. Psalm 16 <clears throat> and um, verse, let's see, I got a wrong verse here. Verse 1. <clears throat> All right, so here's what we're going to do in Psalm 16. Uh, this there's a real possibility that this class on Psalm 16 is going to bleed over into uh, maybe two weeks or three weeks. We'll just have to see. <clears throat> but it would be good for me to explain to you uh, in advance that uh, Psalm 16 um, is quoted in the New Testament. And it's quoted by Peter in different parts, uh, as if Peter, and it, and it was quoted very early, about as early as you can get, almost, as far as uh, after Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, and <clears throat> there are certain things that he's going to bring out, and some of those things are, <clears throat> uh, I believe, are things that he heard from Jesus, and we'll go through scriptures that we've actually gone through before, but we're using them in a different way. Uh, he's actually heard from Jesus, 
and remembers them. And then when they're in the upper room waiting uh, 50 days, seeking the Lord all together in one place, one accord, <clears throat> um, he read something, not just in Psalm 16, but in some of the other scriptures that rang in his ears that this is exactly what Jesus was trying to say. Even though it's slightly different words, it's the same thing. And he's full of a good thing. And he just explodes with the word and with the fullness of that. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. Psalm 16, verse 1. Preserve me, O God. Okay. So I will tell you that much of this does relate to the crucified. Um, but if this does, and this is talking about Jesus crying out, and, and, and we will, within the same chapter, see Peter spell it out and say, this is talking about Jesus. This, the fulfillment of this wasn't some guy back in, you know, it wasn't David. He even says that. Um, <clears throat> preserve me. So this sounds like Jesus is the, the, the weakened one, the willing weakness of, of him in this situation, the cross, the trial, all of that. And he's saying, preserve me, O, o Lord, O, o God, O Adonai. But remember, the New Testament doesn't get into that, but just stick with me just for a short real short amount of time. For in thee do I put my trust. Okay, so he's talking to his Adonai. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Here it is. The soul rising up in the corridor. Thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Adonai. Okay? Now we have this same thing written in the New Testament, but of course they don't use these various names. So how do we know that's it? We read the very same thing and where it came from in the Old Testament. <clears throat> All right. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom in all, uh, is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after an, another god. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer. Remember, this is Psalm 16. Nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. He's talking to Adonai again. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath, and that word is Jehovah, who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night sessions. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so now verse 8. And this is the part that's quoted in the New Testament by Peter. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Okay, so um, actually what I just quoted there was Acts 2. <laughs> but it sounds so close, and so we'll, we'll compare those. Uh, uh, so let's see. <clears throat> Again, Psalm 1, preserve me. That's speaking to Adonai. Uh, in verse 2, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, uh, to Adonai, thou art my Lord, or to Jehovah, thou art my Adonai, my goodness extendeth not to thee. Um, so one of the things, uh, one of the simpler things to start noticing, not just here, but in the Bible, 
is the interplay, and I keep saying this, but I will keep playing it, the interplay of Elohim. It, it doesn't always use the name Elohim in it because it's the three of them flowing with one another. So here we have it. Preserve me, O God. There's two, two of them. <clears throat> uh, o my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Adonai. So you see this interplay that's taken, <clears throat> taking place out there, and they're doing it. They're they're noting Elohim, or they're functioning as Elohim uh, without even using the term, because it's who they are. Okay. Uh, now let's skip down to uh, verse eight. <clears throat> this is. I guess up here I did quote the same one. This is uh, Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Now let's, let's see the interplay again. I <clears throat> have set the Lord. Okay. This is, if you can really grasp this, what you're going to see <clears throat> is that we think God is up there, quote unquote, up there up there just to make us happy and to make our life good. And so he's leaning over the clouds, looking t uh, intently <clears throat> to find if there's any way that he can relate to us or, or help us. <clears throat> what you're seeing here and what you'll see over and over and over again is we're not even mentioned in the thing. This is an interplay between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is how they flow. This is how they move. This is the way they think. This is the way they're built as God. Elohim. And so I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. See, one is higher than the other. I set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved because he's at my right hand. This is not um, uh, David. David wrote this, but this is not David. This is, this is the way the Lord functions with one another. Uh, Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. This is talking about getting through the, the cord or the cross. <clears throat> For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One, that's, he's talking about himself, to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand. There. So they're, it, it, they're, not just, they're not just relating. There is an incredible honor and uh, all the things that we ought to be saying, they say to one another. If I could say it like that. All the things that, that well, the honor and the, you know, you, you know um, I've set you before me. You're at my right hand. Therefore, I am not going to be moved <clears throat> um, because you're at my right hand. Uh, <clears throat> thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Thou will, uh, wilt thou... Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. How many, how many of us <clears throat> regularly flow with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and understand how we're supposed to be relating to them, that this is real, that this is the God relationship that he's trying to bring us into and... and uh, um, and and yet we're acting like Abraham because remember that's how we got into this. We're acting like Abraham in Genesis 15 and 17, where it's all about me. When did when are you going to do this for me? How come you haven't done this by by now? Why don't you accept Ishmael? All that kind of stuff. We're we're horrible in in the way that we treat him, but. We don't have we we don't see him as he is. We don't see them flowing regularly in the scriptures. We don't just go, whoa, my God! There's just a whole lot of them. It's not even about us, and we've made it all about us. 
So, all right, now let's go to uh, Acts 2 again. You probably need to keep your place between Acts 2 and, and uh, Psalm 16. <clears throat> so this is, we're going to be reading the whole set here of words, but this is the words that within it is where Peter quoted this in Acts 2. All right, so let's go to Acts 2, 14. <clears throat> but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto my words. Okay. So he's ready to, he's, he's got some stuff. Verse 15, For these are not drunk and drunken as you suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet joel okay so this guy is all over the word he is not an ignorant fisherman are you <laughs> you know um he's not uh that was the thing that touched me. I mean, I'm not trying to lift anybody up, but I was deeply touched, not just at what uh, Alana was seeing, but you don't get to where she was seeing that without digging in. And she does another thing that's just amazing. She asks questions when she doesn't know. She asks questions. What a great thing. Okay. And so that's Peter we're talking about now. He's, this is him. He, you know, he is, you know, the, the little thing about let's go back to fishing, that's past. It's all done. He's now dedicated his life, not to his occupation, but to God's life, Elohim, and understanding them so that he can properly relate instead of violate. All right. So... Um, verse 16, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You know, I, I don't really dream a lot of dreams, but I've been having a lot of visions lately. And this says your young men shall see the visions. I must be still... Oh, never mind. All right. And your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. <clears throat> All right. So which member of Elohim is, is doing the pouring out here? Okay. And there's... Uh, well, so let's... let's hop this train now to do a little study to try to match up something that is in Joel uh, and that that um, that Peter is saying here from there with something else. <clears throat> uh, so Peter's quoting from many places of the Old Testament. This part of the study is to show that show you that Peter was there when Jesus used this Trinity language. Peter was there and, and 11 other guys. And Jesus was talking to them because he was about to go to the cross. And he's saying important things, not about, well, you know, uh, you know, like, like the disciples, so out of it, so not in tune. Of course, the Spirit of God hadn't come. But, but uh, you know, so... Uh, the temple, you know, what about the temple, you know, and when shall the end come and all this stuff. And he's trying to, he's trying to talk to them about Elohim, their God. Okay, so the Jews don't believe in three in one. Okay, all right, this is important. They believe that there's one God because the commandment said, you know, there's one God. I'm one, is what he said, basically. Um, so, guess what? Neither did Peter, James, John, or Bartholomew, or any of those guys, neither did they believe. They believed in one. 
but Jesus was constantly planting the seeds of a relationship that was not of this earth that they wanted us to enter into and he's constantly seeding their ground and trying to put stuff in there not so that he can teach people there's a trinity you know no there's three actually you jews are wrong that wasn't the point the point was that they might know him and because you can't know him if there's just one he doesn't function that way he he functions within three okay or more if, if two or more if three or more gathered in my midst there am I there am I okay so there's one more whatever number you are it's important okay so um, so he was there when Jesus used this Trinity language and it came to him that in his mind what Jesus was saying to them compared at, at this time when they were studying the scriptures before the Holy Spirit had been given yet or right when the Holy Spirit was given it it compared similarly to what Joel said that Jesus's words and he's going Ooh, these really even though even though Joel is saying he will pour out my spirit and Jesus was saying I will send my spirit that this is that <laughs> okay so um, uh, so Jesus spoke these words to Peter and to others instead of seeing individuals and this is my statement to you so instead of seeing individuals like the father and the son talking or him talking about the father and the son and the and the son doing things and the spirit doing things try to take it out of just three people in different countries as it were um, you know well his parts this and that try to see it as them functioning as Elohim between themselves okay instead of just three separate things this is so tight knit because they're one that it's all has to be this way and we went over the some of these verses not all of them but we went over them but I'm gonna go over them again because we need to see this that Jesus is already preparing them to understand there's three and this is the way we operate Psalm 2 was perfect to show that wasn't it wasn't it when our it was just incredible Mwah! all right John 13 20 verily verily I say unto you truly this Jesus talking truly truly I'm telling you this he that receiveth whomever I send receiveth me he's whoever I pour out He's receiving me and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me okay what is the big deal about all of that if you only see it as well you know you got to receive him if if you know if you receive me he's saying let me tell you we are functioning we are moving together uh, I'm taking care of him he's taking care of him uh, he's this one's taking care of me and I'm taking care of him and it's all a flow of each of us getting low so that that person would be lifted higher and moving in a certain spirit supposedly the body of Christ too but certainly the body that is Elohim all right so truly truly I'm trying to tell you something here Jesus would say um, he that receives whomever I send whoever I pour out on you because if I pour out the Holy Spirit and then I'm gone okay you're receiving me you're not just receiving somebody I sent okay and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me which is the father <laughs> see it's just a they cannot help but speak in this uh, Trinity language is the way I put it with parentheses in my notes but Elohim is the true grasp of this all right 
So, um, John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send. Okay, so now Jesus isn't talking about himself. And remember now, these are just some of the last, I mean, this is the last day or whatever before he's crucified. It's right, if, it's certainly within the last week, um, is uh, that he is setting forth um, eternal principles but we just think he's talking about who, well, I'm going to go and then I'll send somebody else. That's just, I think that's the best way. <clears throat> um, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, so Jesus said, I'll send him. But now he says the Father will send him because they will send him together down here in the weakened condition of this earth. Um, and, but I'm sending him in my name because he doesn't want to go in his name. I'm sending him as invisible because he doesn't want to be seen so that you don't make a big deal out of him, that you make a big deal out of the Father and the Son and their relationship. Anyway, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he's, um, uh, well, let me just read this. Here is Elohim in all his threeness. This is part of the Godhead movement. He will not, and then he says, he will, he will teach you all things. And we go, okay, so the Holy Spirit's going to teach me all kind of stuff. No, no, within Elohim? He's only going to teach you one thing, one, either the Father or the Son. The Spirit's only going to teach you. And that's where it said, whatsoever I've said unto you. He's going to teach you that. So if we go off and go, oh, Holy Spirit, teach me how the atom works or you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, he's not, the Holy Spirit is not here to teach us um, earthly things. This is meant to be the grand uh, uh, picture of the flow that is Elohim, the God who created all things and who set the creation of man on one course as far as his heart is concerned, that you may be in this same image. Okay. So, so Jesus is, you know, didn't you ever wonder why? Have you ever thought of this? Like John, the Gospel of John, um, verse 14, 15, and 16 really seem like they just repeat a lot. You ever wonder why? I mean, it's like, okay. Or even sometimes in the verses you're going, okay, like this right here. This is uh, also John 13. Uh, John 13 I read to you, and then now I just read John 14. And you can go, well, you know, you kind of already said all this sin and stuff. We know who, you know, we know you can do it. God, how dull can we be that we, we're unattentive to the hard things Jesus is saying and we're just seeing them in light of, well, you know, if I had a servant, I would send him too. He ain't sending no servant in that sense. He, he's sending himself in that person, in that in that oneness, they're all one and um, honoring the honor. Okay. <clears throat> um, John 15. So I read John 14, John 13, John 13, 14, now 15. And then we'll read 16 next and then 17 next. One verse out of each of these chapters. <clears throat> um, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send, when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, see, I'm not going to take all the credit about it. I'm sending him, but it's not just me. It's also the Father. But the point is that I'm going away. He's coming. If you could just, even though that little thing that I just did right there, if you could just stop that and put it down and look at it and then and think about the flow that's happening that is the 
It is God declaring himself without declaring himself. Try that one. Because that's what it is. Um, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify me. <laughs> okay? So, here's an interesting thing. Jesus regularly keeps talking about the Holy Spirit going to testify of him and going to teach us what he said. What if there was a grand picture reality of Jesus that the Holy Spirit was come to explain to us, but when we read that, we say, well, I'm gonna, he's going to teach us what Jesus said, so I'm going to go over here and, and just memorize the, the sayings of Jesus. No, he's basically saying you need the spirit of truth, and you're just reading the letter of the truth, the ink on white paper or the ink on papyrus, I don't know. But the, the, this is... This is just incredible. All right, so, uh, so I wrote down the Spirit proceeds from the Father but testifies of the Son. <laughs> it's like, no wonder He's invisible. Where, where are you? I proceeded from the Father. No, no, where are you? I proceeded from the Father. I'm here to testify of the Son. Well, what about you? I'm not he. Sound like John the Baptist? I'm not the one. All right, John 16 now. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient that I go away. I have to go away. I'm telling you, I'm telling you with all the three and a half years that you've been with me, guys, I need to go away because you really don't understand me unless you understand them. You can't understand me just in me because it's not just me and it's not just the Father and it's not just the Holy Spirit. It is one and we are me. I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. So, um, the, it's expedient I go away for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. I got to go away because somebody else is coming. And I can't stay here and declare all of the truth of what I truly am because that's declaring myself. You just see the miracles. You hear the parables. You don't get it yet. I have to go away because if I really, really explained it to you, I mean, haven't you ever had one of the parables where Jesus said, here's the explanation, you kind of went, that's it? Well, I got a feeling there's much more to God, Elohim. And I got a feeling there's much more for us from them, but we got to kind of get in there. We can't, we can't stand outside and just stare at scriptures that talk about one person. Really, I mean, we would say John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 is just Jesus talking about going away and you know, this and that. And yes, I'm going to, oh yeah, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit so you can talk in tongues. And, uh, you know, and he'll help you during church service so that you'll feel a lot more spiritual. Um, no. <laughs> Not, he's, he is doing everything he can to avoid talking about himself. But he's telling us, what if you really want to know me, there's somebody who will testify of me, but he won't testify of himself. That's what Jesus said. He'll He'll take that which is mine, show it unto you, but he will not talk of himself. It's just the way it is, okay? And it's the way we're supposed to be. And there's an Adonai in all of that, and that's where we're going with all this more explanation to show that. But if we don't see Elohim, how are we going to understand an Adonai that is part of the three? And or, or two of them, it's an Adonai for one of them. So it's real, I mean, the, for some of you this may seem tedious, but it is. I mean, if you take the steps, you know, you know, like what I was talking about with Ilana, if you take the steps, take the steps, stumble, trip, fall, say, I don't understand that part, whatever. How are you ever going to know if you're not just, you know, I'm going to 
I'm going to do this. Or, why should I spend all this time doing that? Man, that's a lot of scriptures and a lot of looking up and a lot of work. And Randy's already done that. You know? <clears throat> um... The Comforter, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. It's like, let me go and I'll send you somebody that can really teach you. And of course, the disciples are going, well, you're the best teacher we ever heard. You're just, you're amazing. We don't want you to go, well, what is this guy going to have that, that you don't have the truth? He'll bring the spirit of truth. He'll bring the comfort that is not doctrine, but the comfort of oneness, the comfort of the flow. He'll bring the reality of an Adonai for you to understand and to learn to trust in instead of yourself in the deep trials and sufferings and to not have to put your hand to it. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus is saying that the Spirit is more important than himself at this stage. He gets lower than the Spirit. I need to go away. I got to go away or he won't come. You need him. You'll want him. He's good. I mean, he's better than me because I'm going away. But he's... He's not because he gets there and he starts declaring Jesus on a plane that we, we can't imagine. And, I, and I'm pretty sure most of us probably feel that we know that plane of Jesus. We know that I'm not there. I want to know him. I want to be there. That's why I search. I, you know, yes, I, I'm, I'm preparing for all these classes. I mean, I taught a class on Monday. I taught a class on Tuesday. I taught a class on Wednesday. This week, I, I'm teaching one on Thursday. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm digging. I want the Lord. And I don't want to feed you something that isn't the Lord. But it can just sound like, well, you know, to some of you, I'm sure it probably just sounds like I'm just droning on. You know, with this, just like Jesus is just droning on, you know, with 13 through 17 or whatever. Why do you have to say the same thing? Let's get on with it. Every word is from heaven. Greater than heaven. Higher than the heavens. Um, so Jesus is saying that, okay, um, I already said that. Okay, John 17. Uh, verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. This is Jesus talking now to the Father. I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Well, the Holy Spirit's going to come and show us your words, Jesus. Yeah, well, they weren't really mine. Um, uh, and they have received them, the words, the words. They're going to write them down. They'll call it John, and Matthew, but it won't be John, and it won't be Matthew, and it won't be that physician, and it won't be that guy that worked for Peter and Paul, that young kid, it will be, it will be the gospel. All right. <clears throat> and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and that they have believed that thou didst send me. So I wrote, Jesus didn't give them his words, but the Father's. Since Jesus came out from the Father and was sent by the Father, then he is the, he is the lowly, weakened. He is in the lowly, weakened place, and the Father would function as his Adonai. John 14, 23, Ye have heard that I said unto you, I go away, the cross, the weakened, the willing weakness, and come again unto you through the Holy Spirit, the reality that he brings. 
um, come again unto you, if you loved me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. It's just always this thing. I'm sorry. It is not just in, the, in, in John 13 through 17. It is all through the Old Testament. <clears throat> so I don't know. Let's see. Well, okay. I think I'm going to stop. But we're not done with, uh, with uh, Psalm 16. There is... Uh, there is more of it spoken of in the book of Acts by Peter. Um, and... Well, I guess one of the things, I guess I should say this. Um, we went through all of this, John 13 and all the way up through 17. The words that I read to you are the words that Peter heard that said <clears throat> he's going to send, he's going to pour out his spirit on you. He's coming. This is, and so Peter gets it and he goes, oh my God, I mean, I just got chills. Can you imagine Peter going, oh my God, this, Joel way back then was talking about this right here uh, that Jesus said to us. Y'all remember that? He said, da, da, da. let's write it down. Let's see if we remember what he said, you know. Yes, this is that. What, what a glorious thing. You know, and, a, and the one reason why a lot of this was so effective in Peter um, is because he was present. You say, well, I wish I had been back then. No, no. Are you present with the Lord? Seriously, I'm not joking. Are you present with the Lord? Are you um, regularly with Him? Are you listening to Him? Are you, are you in the Word that He might breathe instead of, quote-unquote, teach? That He might live in you, that He might be the living reality of the things that He was teaching when He was here. But now, this is that. This, this is not the words of it, Peter's saying. That was the words of it. This is that, but this is the... He was talking about the Spirit. This is the one who I, whom I can go to on a regular basis. And I can get low and I say, Holy Spirit... I understand how you and the Father and the Son function. And Jesus said you would glorify him. Well, I'm not going by Jesus saying you would glorify him. I'm going by the fact that I know how y'all work and that you want to glorify him. And the Holy Spirit based on the functioning of the Godhead, Elohim, and the way that you are, and the way that y'all are, the surety that is greater, more sure than heaven and hell and anything else that was created. This surety, based on this surety, I'm asking you to show me, to, to exalt the lowly one, the crucified in my heart and if you and if you guys will put it on that basis I mean you, if you go if you write down what I just said and then you start and you go around and say okay I'm gonna pray let's see oh you're gonna miss it be present be with him listen to what he says uh, get in there you know I was thinking the other day of doing a blog called uh, uh, 
uh, uh, press your press your way forward and knock everybody else out of the way but but talking about um, uh, the woman with the issue of blood who did that because then he she's just trying to get to Jesus and what was in him came into her his virtue you know we don't want to be pushy but we want to be in a spirit that's willing to look foolish trying to get to the Lord you got to get low first maybe he'll disease you or maybe the disease is already here maybe we're not being affected by it as maybe we got used to it and we just came back to where we were you know uh, what is it God said to so many of them but one of them was Saul when thou wast young you were tender and you know da da da, -da. but now Father, we, we are, we're not just people on this planet joining churches and trying to learn lessons that will help our life on this earth. We are gathered here, even if the, even if my manner or my wording is does not please we are still here to get you in spite of me and father i hear you i jesus i hear you holy spirit i hear you i do i hear the the, the voice that is god and i know that this is the path walk ye in it And I pray that you'll give us, give us, first of all, lowliness like Abraham and take us out of Genesis 15 and 17 and bring us into 18 and get, it, get us low and, and, and let those words come out of our mouth that came out of his what mouth when he called you my Adonai. And let us do what he did and just serve you, serve you this and serve you that. And all of that beginning part of Genesis 18, how he, he loved. He, he didn't before, but he did after the circumcision. He loved being that low so that you could be high. instead of us always being high and expecting you to do stuff for us. So, Father, I pray that. I pray that. I pray that from my heart and from my tears and from my quivering lips. Bring these things about for we who want this for we who gather regularly and make it make the classroom as it were vanish make the the pulpit vanish and may we enter in and may your words echo around in that place of entering in that bring spirit and life and comfort and the spirit of truth we ask in Jesus name we ask it in in Jesus name amen hallelujah